last but not least, the Right Honourable John Woodward, MP. Thank you, John. Well, th uh, thank you, Chairman. I think uh, those of us who look forward to an era uh, of better managed public finances and therefore faster growth and better recovery uh, need to be very careful in, in our language. Uh, yesterday, when the debate began in Parliament, uh, the discussion was all about 25% uh, cuts and the parade of the bleeding stumps in the public sector. Uh, and when I explained to them what the budget was proposing, it, it was as if they were in denial because they clearly hadn't read the Red Book or those who started to read the Red Book uh, couldn't understand the figures in it. Uh, what the Chancellor is proposing uh, is to take the 668 billion a year public spend, which was the last Labour year, and to increase that to 735 billion a year over the five-year period of this Parliament. So the Chancellor is proposing a 10% increase in public spending. Now that is the way you and I would describe our own budgets, but we allow uh, our opponents and critics to get away with funny money arguments saying that an increase of 67 billion is a cut uh, and that they wish to confuse what they call real money with what is real money to everybody else, which is the 10 pound notes of the day which you have to use in the shops to uh, carry on living. So we need to win this argument that there is a 10% increase in public spending and the next five years are going to be a fascinating debate within the public sector about how that extra 10% of banknotes is going to be spent. Now of course it would be quite possible for the public sector to so mismanage its affairs that they ended up having to make some very deep and big cuts in services they say they would like to offer us. But if the public sector is wise uh, and keeps wage inflation down to a very low level, if it is wise and reforms its pension provision in a, a sensible way, uh, if it is wise and finds better and cheaper ways of doing things, if it is wise and uses natural wastage uh, to release surplus posts and to start to do what the private sector has been doing for a very long time, it should be possible uh, to get through that period uh, of restriction in the rate of increase uh, in the spending levels in the public sector without damaging anything uh, that matters. And as people here know, we could also use this opportunity to get rid of quite a lot of things that don't matter or annoy people or uh, are vexatious, and some of them have already been mentioned. It seems to me that the really big task for this budget and its successors is to do something about uh, the, the fact that we have six million people on the public sector payroll of working age living on benefits, and that really is six million uh, too many. We can't afford all six million to be on benefits, and it'd be much better for them and for the state of the public finances if we can find jobs for a serious number of those uh, so that instead of requiring benefit payments, uh, they can be in paid private sector employment and can make uh, some kind of contribution through the tax system. We also have another six million people in public sector employment. And it is quite clear that we don't need six million people on a continuing basis to deliver a good range of high quality public services. Uh, the next five years we'll be arguing about how many fewer than six million you need to deliver that service. I'm pleased that MPs are taking the lead and say that we can do with 10% fewer MPs. That's a, a modest start, which gives us a little bit of moral authority, something we're not used to as members of parliament. Uh, and we then need to uh, spread that message to the rest of the public sector because there is clearly underemployment in the public sector and we need to use natural wastage and other means to squeeze that out uh, because we cannot afford six million on benefit of working age and six million uh, in employment uh, on the current basis. Which brings me to the budget's impact upon the private sector because the, the budget's success again will depend on whether there is a uh, vigorous and energetic private sector led recovery. It is unfortunate I think that uh, Dr. Budd's uh, opening salvo in his arguments with the Treasury uh, take the form of saying that the budget itself uh, will marginally reduce uh, total output by 0.1% in the first year and by 0.3% in 
in the second year, although he does concede that thereafter uh, output will be helped by the budget measures, which is good news. So we need to look at those budget measures and see whether uh, Dr. Budd may be right. Uh, if we look at the overall impact of taxation upon the corporate sector, uh, the budget is pretty neutral. The, the, the numbers are not large in relation to the size of the economy. Uh, there's quite a lot of switching going on. Uh, banks uh, obviously have to pay their extra special tax. Uh, companies with big investment programs will be losing on the investment allowances. The, the main winners will be non-banks that don't invest very much because they will benefit from the lower corporate tax rate. And the smaller and medium-sized enterprises will be uh, bigger winners, particularly out of the combined offerings on national insurance and the smaller companies' corporation tax rate. Uh, and I think that's a sensible bias to put into the system because all the evidence of past recoveries uh, is that job generation in the small and medium-sized enterprise sector uh, is usually stronger and better uh, than amongst the larger corporates. And so I can understand the bias the Chancellor is putting into the system. But we're going to need uh, a lot of uh, success in recovery for the private sector to generate anything like the hundreds of thousands of jobs needed uh, to take up the slack from the public sector and to start to make inroads into that very large amount of unemployment that we currently suffer from. I would myself, of course, like to see subsequent budgets return to tax cutting. Uh, I think uh, cutting the headline rate of corporation tax is an extremely good idea because I think it does send out a very good signal to international investors. And international investors often run their numbers on headline rates and don't make all the sophisticated adjustments for allowances, so it can flatter uh, in a justified way uh, the possible returns in Britain. Uh, we were nothing like tax competitive at the end of the Labour government, and we need to work away very, uh, with great precision to make sure we are much more tax efficient. Uh, 